Hey guys, how's it going? It's a couple days after Christmas and uh, it's a Sunday. Me day, I like to call it. Um, working on the tea again um, this weekend. Actually, I'm only getting the one day we uh, traveled for uh, Christmas Day. Hope everybody had a uh, very nice Christmas and um, good time with your uh, family and friends. And uh, hopefully Santa came and brought you some cool car parts and boat stuff and trucks and everything that you're into. Um, anyway, I'll get right into it. We're um, working with the floor and the tea right now. Um, it has not been really touched in I guess five years since I uh, got the project because what I did was I cut out some of the uh, areas of the floor because we got a whole different engine combo going in this than stock obviously and what we're doing is we're making a uh, perimeter right now for the floor and um, I'm using some uh, square tube for to uh, start this whole process and uh, what I'm gonna do is make a perimeter around the transmission and uh, being that we I, I built this uh, top mounted shifter which has the uh, most of the link all the linkage arms on top of the transmission and then it curls down the transmission and hooks up to it. This keeps everything tight in here because this car is extremely tight and I'm a big boy. So I don't have all the room to uh, run a four speed shifter mounted on the side of the transmission. It, this thing is close to my leg as, as it is. So I uh, made this all up and it works perfect. So right now I'm just going to uh, make a perimeter around it and uh, start making some templates. And then what I'm going to use is uh, some uh, eighth inch 120 uh, uh, plates for the floor. Um, I'm used at that. That's usually you use a ran out of like an 18 gauge steel, which is uh, thinner than that, but I'm not doing a whole bunch of bracing. It's you'll see how it goes. It just, it sounds kind of heavy duty. It is, but I'm not doing a lot of bracing and um, I'm not going to be doing any uh, rolling any beads in the pan to make it stronger. So we're using flat pieces in here because it's just, it's tight as it is anyway. And uh, so, well, come along for the ride and you'll see how we're going. I'm going to have a big list of stuff to do today. Or this weekend. Got to uh, trial fit the window regulators and the doors. Headlight stanchions. Tail lights with a question mark because I'm still trying to figure it out. License plate. Um, my little spinner thing in the back which you'll see later. Hard to explain. Steer box, pedals, throttle rod, fuel filter, moon tanks, oil recovery tank, brake line pass through, don't have that part yet, and got side side mounted gas mount, that's done. So I got the floors pre fitted. They're just the plates are just laying there. They gotta be uh, all put in place and grinded a little bit. Those were just cut on the bandsaw out of uh, cardboard templates. So just got to uh, do a little grinding, do some spot welding, and uh, get it all along. So with that said, we're going to... Uh, get this party started all right let's roll 
Well, first order business is, uh, let's make this thing steerable. Placed up on my leg here, I have a uh, reversed Corvair steering box, which you could get off eBay or Speedway Motors, maybe SoCal Speed Shop. Um, I happened to get this from Jeg's Performance a few years ago, forgot about it, and it was a little bonus, a little score, even though I still paid for it, but it was nice to uh, have it in stock when you could save money now spending. <laughs> anyway, after that, the uh, this mount I made used to hold a uh, Model A steering box with the incorporated column, and uh, that was going to be my choice of steering on it. It did work but since I shortened the car up and I'm doing other little doodads different I already have that steering box I'm going to uh, end up using the new one so what I gotta do is use my little straight edge I'm gonna cut this cut this down because it's too tall for this steering box. So all I gotta do is cut that down and then uh, I made a boxing plate for it already. And then um, I just have to make a top plate for it to uh, bolt down to. But it's a uh, pretty heavy duty, uh, heavy duty stuff. So should be, should work fine. And I got my um, Corvair Pitman arm. Got that from Speedway Motors. That was a little bit of a stinger. It was uh, like 68 bucks. I've been searching for one for a while. I tried to find stuff on the cheap, but you get to a point where you're like, all right, just freaking buy it. Anyway, all right, well, I'm gonna get cutting and um, start making this happen. So placement too is gonna be a little crucial too because I want to uh, have the uh, I have another column I'll show you uh, probably in a couple seconds but probably in 20-30 minutes <laughs> gotta love the uh, video timing so alright alright next day we got some stuff done yesterday. Got the uh, fuel filter slash pressure regulator mounted. That little gauge will be coming off because I have the one up here. Um, we got the headlight stanchions mounted. Threw the headlights on there for fun because I haven't seen them in a while. But we got to try all fit everything because, like I said, another video, my uh, girlfriend's gonna start doing body work, which is cool, and everything has to get fitted. Still playing with the bracket for steering box, but. And then I gotta re uh, cut the shaft because we took all the inches off the frame that I know the video. So, all right. Well, we will uh, get started and update as we go. Well, here I am. Um, so I made this bracket yesterday for the uh, uh, steering box and uh, there's a section that I cut a little too short on this one that I really should have added basically from here to here there's a little piece missing that the way I 
I uh, got the uh, steering box positioned. It's probably hard to explain, but all in all, I'm making a whole new uh, steering box plate. So that's what we're doing. This way we can have it completely right uh, to the point where I am extremely happy with it. And then we'll uh, get it all spot welded. So got to cut this here. I already cut some of this out and then uh, going to corner cut it and then round it off with a uh, grinder and then use the drill press, get it drilled and then uh, show the end result. side of the, uh, I guess we'll call it a, well, it's not a console, it's part of the floor where the uh, transmission hump is, um, if you want, let's uh, lay a bead together, well, if you don't want to, well, close your eyes. Tacky tack tack. I will uh this this whole floor section is gonna be removable. So what I'm gonna do is uh I'm actually getting very well tacked and then I'm going to uh bench weld it. A couple more down here. This uh, steel is uh, um, eighth inch, you know, 120. The reason I'm using such heavy stuff is because uh, I'm not using a ton of braces under here. So, and the uh, the plate of steel I got was only about 15, 18 pounds anyway. So it's really not that heavy. The reason I was telling you is because some people will be like, oh my god, you're welding the hell out of that sheet metal. But it's thick, so it, you can put a lot of heat into it. This side of the garage I'm on is uh, not the uh, optimal welding side because of the power on this side of the garage. So I could do spot welds and stuff like that, but then I go over to the uh, other side and do finish welding. All right, got it spotted in. All right, well, we have the main floor uh, stitched together. And uh, a couple spot welds, a couple little worm welds there. I call them worms because they. I'm in a funny position doing this, and the thing went. Bleh. Sorry about my uh, way to describe things. Anyway, um, so we're looking pretty good so far. I got to. Um, I'm a little behind. I had to do a couple other things today like go out and get some more grinding discs I've been using a lot on the other project and I come back to this one and I'm like whoa if I need some more stuff anyway <laughs> no harm no foul um, I uh, need to cut this section out this is a little bump that comes out and what I got to do is I'm going to continue this up but I'm not going to use the heavy duty stuff I'm going to use uh, probably more 18 gauge or you know 20 gauge cold rolled steel up into the firewall area but I need to be creative with it because I would like this floor to be able to come out if I need to that's how I built it so it's going to uh, um, screw down, not with screws, but I'm going to use um, uh, nut certs and then use uh, um, Allen heads, you know, 
tapered Allen heads to screw it down and uh, whatever I use for floor, you know, mat or carpet or whatever, I just peel it up and then I could unbolt the floor and lift it up and out. So I gotta pretty much make something that will um, engage into this floor, but also not expel, you know, the elements as you're driving. All right. Oh, I also got the steering box on. And uh, it's just uh, tack welded on, but it's nice and tight. So that's pretty much it. We worked with the floors and the steering today. Not much more. There's a couple other things, but not really worth go getting into. All right. I'm video recording in the uh, kitchen here at the table where I do all my thinking and searching for parts and whatnot. Anyway, <clears throat> we're working on the uh, 27T today and uh, I, I want to do something fun with the uh, fuel cap on, on the uh, car. I have a fuel cell in the uh, trunk that's pretty much in between the uh, the trunk itself and the um, cockpit area of the car. So it's kind of like in between, mostly in the trunk though. There's not much room in there, especially when you put a, uh, a notch in the back. So anyway, um, this is the stock cap for the uh, fuel cell. It's in there, it's an RCI tank. And uh, this here is part of a uh, fuel cell um, top for a uh, race car, which was a big oval that had the rollover valve and all the perimeter bolts and then a, uh, an outlet. Um, I've been kicking that part around for probably 10 years now or more. So I decided to uh, take a hole saw and um, well, I took this plate, I screwed it to a pretty big block of wood and I took the hole saw, pretty big one, and cut out my desired um, size here for which the hole saw pretty much just scratched the surface. So I ended up having to cut the rest of it with a, uh, a cutoff tool. Anyway, this had the, um, a screw-on cap as well. This is a uh, pretty rare uh, Mickey Thompson spinner. And it's even more rare because this is uh, one of the few um, pieces I have left of my father's you know, drag racing history and hot rodding. I have a pair of these. Um, one of them has the, uh, cup, you know, for the, you know, the rim. And this one was just hanging out by itself. I got this out of the garage, uh, 25 years ago. And, uh, it's always been in my, you know, bedroom, uh, on display. Um, excuse me. How can I help you? My dog likes to get pet all the time. Anyway, we're filming. So what I did was, this cap happened to fit pretty damn perfect. And uh, it still has the knurled end here. So I could grip this knurled end and not have to try to grip, you know, the, you know, the actual spinner itself, you know, to release it. So what I did was I uh, marked center, drilled it. It has a uh, 5 16 bolt on that's attached to this. And I used a nylon washer in there for um, 
you know, uh, to seal it off. And then I used one of these nuts. I can't remember the name of these, these type of nuts, but I have a whole bunch of these all in different sizes. What, what the reason I'm d using this is because the, the stud was uh, just poking through. And what I want to do is I want to use a chain on this um, down into here because I don't want this thing disappearing at a car show. Um, not saying, you know, all car people are thieves or anything, but I don't want to tempt anybody. You know, if they spin this off and then psh, there's a chain there, they're done. Not going to be leaving the car that long anyway, but... Also, another thing, you know, uh, me as a big dummy, you know, if I'm filling the car up, if there's a chain that's not going to go anywhere. Anyway, uh, this is the first part of this uh, segment, and um, what i got to do next is source a uh, um, exhaust elbow for this. This is made out of steel, so what I'll do is I'll get that on there and weld it and uh, make a reducer because the size is <laughs> half the size. All right.